All right, guys, we'll leave you here. Just gonna show you a little band circuit that I've been using of late uh, with some of my clients um, and myself a bit. Um, I just thought I'd share it with you guys. So what this is, it's a band resistance circuit. And what I found is it works really well as something to basically throw in at the end of a session. Um, you know, I, in a personal training setting, I basically got one client coming in after the other, or one group coming in after the other. And, you know, it's pretty jammed for time. And my guys are pretty well drilled. They know that they're meant to get here early before their session. They come about 15 minutes beforehand, do their foam rolling, do their mobility and their dynamic warm up, bit of activation work, and then I come and get them and we go through the main stuff. Um, but it's still pretty crammed for time. And obviously we want to focus on the, the biggest bang for your buck exercise. But there's still, there is definitely a place for some of the, the smaller work, the isolation stuff. But when you're limited for time, it's like, well, where do we fit it in? So this is a little um, circuit or a pair really, um, that what I've been doing for probably the past month or so is just leaving my clients with it at the end, right? Because it's very low complexity. Um, nothing's really gonna go wrong. It's very easy to teach. And I can just say, right, we're gonna finish up, but now I'm gonna finish you to do these two exercises, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and off you go. And you can just bang out a couple of sets of each, five minutes on your own, and I'll move on to my next client. And it just lets the clients get that little bit of extra work in. Um, and there's some noticeable results, which I'll talk about in a second. So first, the two exercises, right? First one is a seated band resisted hip external rotation and abduction, or good girl, bad girl. Much easier to say, much easier to remember. So what we do is we double over a little mini band, find the suitable band resistance level for your client, step through it, get it just below the knees, right, sitting at the start of a flat bench or a, or a box like I've got set up, get yourself basically into your box squat position. So feet quite wide, toes turn out a little bit, arch in the back and make sure you maintain that arch, that's part of the drill, slight forward hinge. Then from here, we're just gonna collapse in, not all the way in where you lose band tension and, it, and the band falls down. Just come in it enough to take the, the tension off and then drive the knees out and you know, reasonably quick tempo. I just like to cue clients to hit a pause at, on the outside. Right, so I don't give them a time to hold, just enough to stop momentum. Right, squeeze. Right, and within a few reps, you, you will know what's working. You will get a serious burn and a bit of a glute pump going on through those hip external rotators. External rotators. Right, and generally we hit those for higher reps, 15, 20, 25 reps a pop. Right, the other exercise. Really simple, just a band resisted tricep push down. Right, hook the band over anything, your squat rack, any bars you've got. Right, pin the elbow in. Same thing, pretty fast tempo because we're doing high volume. And what we're looking for is that we make sure we get the full lockout. And on the way up, even though I'm going pretty quick, I control it up. I don't let the band just fling me up. Right, so here, bang, 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 pump them out, switch sides, right, get all your reps in. And we usually do this also, 15, 20, 25 a side. Right, obviously the higher you hold it, that's gonna be more resistance. Lower down, a bit easier, and you can Change that as you go. You know, when you're fresh, you might hold it up here, get a bit more work done. Sets two, three, when you're getting tired, bring it down a bit to adjust accordingly. Okay, so what I like about these ones, let's start with the triceps. One, being band resisted, it's a much lower stress exercise for the elbow joints in particular, right? Because it's an accommodating strength curve. So this part right back here, when the elbow is at full flexion, it's not that much load because the band's up, there's no tension. Right, and then as it comes on more and more as you get closer to lockout, right, we, you have to work harder against more band tension. Right, and this is why it's always been a, a popular lift with power lifters, as it's uh, that the strength curve is the same as with a bench press, right? When they're trying to train their lockout. Obviously the lockout's a, a harder point for the power lifters when they're benching with gear with the shirts. Right? So um, with your male clients, you're generally not gonna have to convince them too hard to have to do extra arm work. Every guy likes working their arms so they can bang these out, they work good in an arm circuit as well as a superset with some bicep curls. Okay, but also with the females, there's two aspects to it. One is, I mean, from the, a body composition or aesthetic standpoint, females generally, they like working their arms, right? They like to, you know, how often do your female clients sort of say, look, I want to have those nice toned arms. And with this, they can feel it, they can feel it. You get a pump there, you know that your triceps are working and they tend to enjoy that, right? The other thing is with push-ups. So, 
when we're teaching female clients to sort of break through and get to that first full push up, there's, you know, we've got a standard progression we we'll use, working from inclines, um, and then often using some band assisted push ups as well, which I might make another video about actually. And along the way, we're working their interior core, you know, telling them how to engage the glutes, engage the anterior core, move their body as a plank. But still, one of the parts that females can be limited in in getting their push ups is just some direct tricep work. And this is why I feel there is still definitely a place for some isolation exercise. I don't think everything has to be compounded, integrated all the time. Isolation has its place, right? It's great for targeting weak points. So in this instance, with the triceps, all right, just think, hopefully you can still see me here. With the push-ups, how often when you've got a, a female client who's just thereabouts, she's just on the cusp of getting through to her first full push-ups, how often do we see this? We get them down. Right, we get them down in a push-up position and they're trying to control, 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 control and then BOOM! They'll slip down, right? And as they slip down what we get is that crowding of the shoulders. The shoulders roll forward, the scapula tilts over and generally the reason for that, even if we've taught them you know, that proper core position, the glutes are on, the abs are tight, all that stuff, what happens is as we get here, look, we get to that point where it's the longest lever, the elbow is furthest away from the body, the triceps simply can't resist that elbow flexion anymore. It's purely tricep strength. We get here, 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 triceps give out, boom, fall down, and then to the ground. Right, so something like a band resisted um, band push down or any, any direct tricep work will work well. But that can really help. And it's just my my anecdotal evidence. Um, but I've been using this for a, well, a lot with females, but this particular circuit been throwing it in a lot with clients over the past month or so and it definitely improves their uh, their push-ups right and so that's just my little n equals 15 or 20 um, but that's what I found right they've definitely seen some carry over there and what I like about the bands over most other tricep work is as I said it's a little bit less stress um, which makes it more suitable for higher volume work and being a small muscle it ten generally tends to respond better to higher frequency and higher volume Right, so the band works really well for that. With the seated hip, external rotation, abduction, good girl, bad girl. Right, the benefits here, again, this one is one that you're going to have a much easier time convincing the girls to want to do because they get to feel it in their glutes. You're not, you say, look, it's going to make your butt look better. Bang, they're in, they're soft. That's easy. Um, of course, from a performance standpoint, this is going to improve any of their squat patterns, even their deadlift pattern, especially a sumo deadlift pattern, because we're teaching them to keep those knees out, you know, to prevent that valgus collapse of the knees. With the guys, same thing. Your selling point's probably going to be less about the glutes. Guys generally don't tend to be as, um, as interested in the stuff that they can't see in the mirror. Guys, you should be. Definitely work on your glutes and your legs. But explain to them it's going to help them, again, with their squat, with their deadlift. It's an assistance lift to help um, help bring those up to stop them buckling in. And you can see here, we're in that box squat position. Right? When we do a box squat, we have the, the knees wide and we've got to push out and spread against the floor. Right? So we're deliberately driving that pattern. Right? So this can help. And again, just being the band um, that lets you use a high volume without a lot of stress, you'll definitely feel it working. It tends to work really well. So programming wise, generally I'll um, put this in. Say I've got my client doing this now they're coming to see me a couple of times a week, as I said. At the end, I can say, all right, we've done our main stuff. I'm going to set up these bands for you. Off you go. I'll get you to go back and forth two or three times, hitting those rep ranges that I spoke about, roughly that sort of 15, 20, 25 rep range. Um, if they want to have it in their own program, sure, we'll chuck it at the end there for them to go away and do on their own as well. But I just think it's a really useful drill that you can throw in at the end of the session um, without taking too much extra time of your own and get them consistent with it two or three times a week. Run that for a month, and I think you'll be uh, surprised with the results that you might get. Probably the most obvious being some of your females with their push-ups, um, just that external rotation strength through the hips. I think you'll find your clients really enjoy it too. Give it a go, let me know what you think.